There are some difficult headlines tonight involving the coronavirus, the deadliest day yet in both Florida and Texas. Cases rising in 40 states tonight, and by the end of the day today, July, will already have more reported cases of the virus of any month since this pandemic began. And just in as we were coming on tonight, the COVID tracking project now reporting a record number of cases from the states today, 71,000 cases in 24 hours alone. And tonight, as we always do here, the numbers, the lives lost, more than 138,000 Americans lost to this virus. In Florida tonight, that record daily toll, 156 deaths in 24 hours. Texas, that record high death toll as well, 129 lives lost. Army medical specialists have arrived in Houston to help the city's overtaxed hospitals there. And in San Antonio tonight, hospitals and morgues are running out of space. Refrigerated trucks have now been brought in. Arizona's hospitals are facing staffing shortages there, and one out of every four people tested in Arizona now are positive. And amid all of this, there is a raging debate over masks in this country in Georgia, with cases and deaths rising. The governor there has now banned all local governments from requiring people to wear masks. We all know it's easy to get lost in all of these numbers night to night, but we do want to stay on the stories of the families affected in this country, the doctors and nurses affected too. And tonight here, the tearful respiratory therapist who was determined to make sure that her patient did not die alone. ABC's Victor Akendo leading us off from Florida tonight. Florida facing its deadliest day yet. The virus claiming 156 lives in just 24 hours. Tonight in Miami, the epicenter. Hospitals are now at 95% capacity. This plea from the front lines. As an ICU nurse, uh, I beg you to take this virus seriously. Doctors say there is an urgent need for plasma. The governor says he's working with the White House to get more of the drug remdesivir. If something is not done to dramatically alter our course, we could be in a, a more dire situation than what we're in. Nearly 14,000 new cases reported, lines for testing lasting hours. The wait for results for some taking weeks. So I'm going to pull your mask a little bit forward. I went in for a test this morning. The nurse telling me the labs are simply overwhelmed. It sounds frustrating. On average now, how long does it take for the labs to get the results back? 14 days. Two weeks. Two weeks, and I've had patients up to 18 days, and it was very frustrating. These delays couldn't come at a worse time. A new study from The Lancet shows the speed of testing is the most critical factor for success of contact tracing to slow the spread. In Texas, long waits for test results, too, and hospital space is maxed out. The Army opening up a new ward in Houston. 24-year-old Paola Castillo spent a month on a ventilator in Texas. She almost didn't make it. It's just a miracle that I'm alive. It was God speaking to me. And it's like he gave me a second chance to live my life again. This week, after 79 days in the hospital fighting COVID, Paola was strong enough to go home. But for Annalise Long, the surge at Texas hospitals created a worst case scenario for her family. That's the person who's got your back, you know. You can trust them with anything. <laughs> The 47-year-old mother of triplets beat COVID in March, but her kidneys and liver never recovered. Her husband says when doctors tried for a transplant, there were no open beds. And Elise losing her battle. That was the hardest thing. It's a she... She gave it her all. In Arizona, officials ordering refrigerated trucks as they run out of room in morgues. 600 nurses headed there to help. To Respiratory them. therapist Beth see. Taylor says she was connected by video with the family when the breathing tube of their loved one was removed. And I held his hand and I stroked his hair until he passed. She says the family was unaware at the very moment he died. I will never forget the crying and the screaming from the other side of that video chat. I want that family member, those family members to know that I sat with him and I held his hand until he passed and that he was not alone. Deaths from the virus now climbing in 27 states as nearly half the country either pauses or reverses reopening. In Georgia, which reopened early, the governor signing an executive order banning cities from passing their own mask mandates. We shouldn't need a mask mandate for people to do the right thing. The governor welcoming the president yesterday who told our affiliate WSV 
Georgia's done it all right. For Georgia, it's been great because, you know, you've kept it down and you've reopened and you're just, you know, you're getting close to having 100% open and you've really kept the virus to level down, which is an incredible tribute. To but cases, hospitalizations and deaths are climbing in Georgia. The mayor of Atlanta accusing the president of breaking the law when he landed. By not having on a mask, uh, President Trump did violate law in the city of Atlanta. So let's get to Victor Akendo now. Victor, we saw that you got tested today. Many of our correspondents are doing that from time to time because you've been uh, so dutiful out there reporting on this. 14 days, up to 18 days to wait for results there. So you'll keep us posted. It just illustrates how long people are waiting across the country. And in the meantime, I know you have news tonight. The governor of Georgia now taking legal action. David, this is setting up to be a legal showdown in Georgia. Governor Brian Kemp filing a lawsuit seeking to block Atlanta from rolling back parts of its reopening, including closing down dining rooms and that all important mask mandate. He says he's doing this on behalf of struggling businesses. David. All right, Victor, thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.